Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the radio group widget and I'm going to show you its properties and ways in which you can configure it. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate here in AppSmith. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, for us to get started I'm just going to go to the widget section which we are in right here and bring in a new radio group widget. So I'm just going to drag this and drop it. And right there we have a radio group widget on the canvas. The first property we have here is the options property and this specifies a list of unique items uh, that is used to build the radio group. So we can go in to add a new option by clicking on the um, plus button and entering in a name. So let's call this maybe and a value of M and there we have a new entry in the radio group widget. And we can also go in to make these options dynamic so we can go into JavaScript mode and all you need to do is to supply an array of objects containing labels and value. And you also need to have in mind that each item must be unique. All right, so that is the options property. The next property we have is the default selected value property. And this is the option that is selected whenever the radio group is rendered. So we can go to update this to something like M for example, and we have the maybe option selected by default. Moving on, we also have the required property, and this is designed to be used with a form widget. We have the form widget right here. Whenever this is turned on, it is going to disable form submission until the user goes in to enter a value, and it's going to be helpful that if you are making use of the required property, you want to clear the default selected value so that you have no value selected by default. So let's set this back to Y. All right. Similarly, we have the visible property and this property is going to control the visibility of the widget when the application is deployed. So turning this off or on is going to control if the widget will be visible in the deployed application. And lastly, we have the disabled property. This is going to disable user input whenever it is turned on. So for any of these inputs required visible and disabled property, you can go into the JavaScript mode and write some JS logic to determine when any of these properties can be turned on or off by returning true or false. All right, moving on to actions, we can run an action whenever the selection on the widget changes. So whenever a user goes in to select a new item on the radio group widget, we can choose to run an action. And we can pick from any of the actions in this list, in the predefined list, or we can go into JavaScript mode and write some custom logic we want to be executed each time the selection changes. All right, so this has been the radio group widget. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. I'll be sure to attend to that. Thank you very much for seeing this video and I'm going to catch you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.